In today's video, it's an A-level chemistry, standard level IB chemistry video, and we're looking at rules for determining oxidation states. When we're looking at oxidation states, it all relies on us understanding what oxidation and reduction are. So remember, oil rig will help you with this. So oxidation is the loss of electrons, whereas reduction is the gain of electrons. And that is key. However, at this high level, it's not always easy to see how electrons have been transferred in redox processes. And remember, redox processes are ones where oxidation and reduction occur at the same time. And therefore, oxidation states are a made-up tool made up by us in order to help us identify which species have been oxidized and which have been reduced. And basically, there's a whole set of rules you need to follow. And if you follow those rules, you'll be able to, first of all, work out the various oxidation states and secondly, work out what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. So to put that into words, oxidation states are a useful tool for allowing us to identify which species has been oxidized and which has been reduced. So here are oxidation state rules, or you could have said our oxidation number rules. It means the same thing. And our first rule you have to learn is that elements which are not combined with other elements have an oxidation state of zero. So let's look at some examples. Oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur as elements by themselves have an oxidation state of zero. For number two, the oxidation state or oxidation number of any young combined ion is the same as its charge. So taking sodium ion, for example, its oxidation state will be plus one. Calcium, its oxidation state will be plus two. So its oxidation state or number is the same as the charge on its ion. Rule three, the sum of all the oxidation numbers in a molecule is zero. Such as water, carbon dioxide, hydrogen chloride, etc. So the sum of all the oxidation numbers, so that means the individual oxidation numbers here. So the oxidation number of hydrogen, and the oxidation number of oxygen, two lots of hydrogen plus the oxidation number for oxygen will equal zero. Carbon's oxidation number plus two lots of oxygen's oxidation number will also be zero, and so on. NB, linked to this point, we need to consider ions, and we're looking at more complicated ions, so ones which contain two or more elements, so I'm going to call that in a complicated ion, the sum of oxidation numbers is equal to the charge of the ion. So taking the ion SO42 minus, so the sulfate ion, what that means is if you add the oxidation number of sulfur to four lots of oxygen, you'll still have a net charge of two minus. For the nitrate ion, if you add the oxidation number for nitrogen to three lots of oxygen, you'll have a net charge of one minus. Next, up, a couple of elements which you just have to learn the numbers for. So hydrogen, try and remember that that always has an oxidation number or state of plus one. The exception is hydrogen combined as a metal hydride. And here it has an oxidation number of minus one. So you must learn that exception. Fluorine is the second element you need to know the oxidation number off by heart, and its oxidation number is always minus one. Oxygen now, this is slightly more complicated. It usually has an oxidation number of minus two. However, there are a few exceptions. So firstly, in peroxides, it has an oxidation number of minus one instead of minus two. And secondly, when it combines with fluorine, it has an oxidation number of positive one. In order for this to make more sense, let's write the peroxide formula, and that's H2O2. So hydrogen will have an oxidation state of plus one, and oxygen in this case, according to our exception, will be minus one. 
By the way, guys, some teachers might have taught you this in terms of which elements are more electronegative. So you treat covalent compounds as ionic compounds. Obviously, that method works too, but this, for me, is the most straightforward thing to do because you just have to learn a load of rules and it will make sure you get the answer right every single time. Anyway, rule seven, looking at chlorine now as the element. Remember that it always has an oxidation number of minus one. There is an exception here. So when it's combined with fluorine, it switches the sign of its oxidation number to being positive, and the same is true for oxygen. Now, the number it turns into will very much depend on the compound you find it in, and we will look at some examples to make sure that actually makes sense for you guys. And then the last rule, which is fairly straightforward, and hopefully you remember this from GCSE and IGCSE, for groups one to three, the oxidation number is the same as the group number. E.g. sodium is in group one, so its oxidation number is plus one. And make sure you realize that this is positive, by the way. Calcium is in group two, its oxidation number is plus two. Aluminium is in group three, so its oxidation number is plus three. So let's have a look at some various examples, and we're going to work out the various oxidation numbers of the elements found within these examples. So one, we're going to look at ammonia. Now, according to rule three, the sum of all oxidation numbers in a molecule is zero. We know that overall, this charge on the ammonia will be zero. And that's helpful because now we need to work out the various oxidation numbers of both nitrogen and hydrogen. So according to rule four, we know that hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one. We know that there is no overall charge. So because we have three hydrogens, we have a plus three charge. So what must the oxidation number of nitrogen be? Well, it must be minus three. Guys, there's just a quick correction I want to make, which is a long rule six, where I said that when oxygen is combined with fluorine, that it has a plus one oxidation state. Indeed, that is correct sometimes, but it can actually be variable depending on the compound it's in. So just if you change your notes and just write positive here, that will make it much better. And it's very similar to what we wrote for seven, so sorry about that. Following on from our oxidation state rules, we need to be able to look at redox reactions and look at the equations and decide what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. So we're going to have our rules side by side so we can refer to them because we'll need to know what the various oxidation states are in order to do these questions. Looking at our first equation, therefore, we've got sodium, which is a solid, oxygen, which is a gas, forming sodium oxide. And we need to compare the various oxidation states of the elements on both sides of the arrow. So starting with sodium, well, according to rule one, elements not combined with other elements have an oxidation state of zero. So here we know sodium has an oxidation state of zero. Looking at it in sodium oxide, so according to rule eight, for groups one, two and three, the oxidation number is the same as the group number. So sodium is in group one, which is why its oxidation number here is plus one. Looking at oxygen now, now oxygen is an element not combined with any other elements. According to rule one, its oxidation state is therefore zero. And then combined with sodium, so as sodium oxide, we know according to rule six that it has an oxidation number of minus two. And do check that the overall net charge is zero on these things to make sure you're doing it right. And now let's just have a look at what's happened with the numbers. So sodium has gone from zero to plus one which means that it has lost electrons in order to become positive. And because it's lost electrons, according to oil rig, we know that sodium has therefore been oxidized. Oxygen has gone from zero to minus two, which means it's gained electrons, so it has been reduced. And then depending on how they ask the question, you can add a couple more statements. So although sodium has been oxidized, it means it has automatically acted as a reducing agent because it has caused oxygen to be reduced. So you can write sodium has been oxidized and you can also write sodium acts as a reducing agent. Concurrently, if oxygen has been reduced, it means it's automatically acted as an oxidizing agent. Let's look at a second example where copper oxide reacts with hydrogen to form co copper plus water. So starting with oxygen, let's work out its changes in oxidation state. According to rule six, it has an oxidation state of minus two. 
There are no exceptions here, so we're going to put a minus 2 here. And looking on the right-hand side, again, oxygen will have an oxidation number of minus 2. So here, nothing's happened to it. It hasn't been oxidized or reduced because its oxidation state has remained the same. Copper now, well, we know the net charge of copper oxide is zero, so by definition, copper must therefore have an oxidation state of plus two. And then on the right-hand side, it exists as an uncombined element. According to rule one, its oxidation state must therefore be zero. Hydrogen now, hydrogen exists as an uncombined element. On the left-hand side, its oxidation number is therefore zero. On the right-hand side, it exists in water. The net charge must be zero. So that means that each hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one. And now we can work out what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. So copper has gone from plus two to zero, which means it has gained electrons in order to become effectively more negative. So copper has been reduced. And we might as well write the matching statement here, which is that it acts as an oxidizing agent. Looking at hydrogen now, hydrogen's gone from zero to plus one. In order to become positive, it must have lost electrons. According to oil rig, it's therefore been oxidized. And automatically acts as a reducing agent. Let's do a third example now. So lead oxide plus hydrogen forms lead plus water. So, starting with oxygen, we know it has an oxidation number of minus 2. It's found in water. Now, again, it has an oxidation number of minus 2. Lead now, we know that lead oxide must have a zero net charge, which is why lead is plus 2. Lead on the right-hand side exists by itself as an uncombined element, which is why its oxidation state is zero. Lastly, hydrogen. Hydrogen on the left-hand side is an uncombined element. Its oxidation state is zero. Found within water, it has a oxidation state of plus one. And by the way, this is all found within the rules that we were looking at earlier. Now let's work out what's been going on. Looking at lead, it's gone from plus two to zero, which means it must have gained electrons to become less positive. Because it's gained electrons, we know it's been reduced. And we also know that means it acts as a oxidizing agent. Oxygen has remained the same. It has neither been oxidized or reduced because its oxidation number has remained at minus two. Hydrogen, however, has gone from having a zero oxidation state to a plus one oxidation state. In order to become positive, it must have therefore lost electrons and therefore hydrogen has been oxidized. And as such, acts as a reducing agent.